Okay, so now I'm ready to start georeferencing. And one of the first things that I want to do is go ahead and make this hollow. You just double click this little color part here and say hollow. This will make it to where I can actually see through this later on. When it, and this is going to be important when I start bringing the topo map into place. Because the topo map is going to go somewhere here. And we want it to like, you know, be able to see it. Um, so anyways, if I go and search, uh, zoom to layer, I can see some hints on this uh, map in order to georeference it better. Uh, one thing that I noticed the scale is a 1 to 50,000 and you can see here it's cropped out and this could happen sometimes because this, the scanner bed's not big enough to scan it or um, it just got cropped or so uh, it kind of lost some of the information uh, we don't have uh, like the metadata kind of you know at the bottom of the topo map we don't have that kind of information source information there but we have this scale of 1 to 50,000 also if we zoom in on the corners we can notice that there is uh, control points that we can use, some decimal degrees um, that we know of, and then also it has um, the UTM uh, markers throughout it gridded on here, so they will be able to get some points off of those too. Um, one thing we also notice is this little 55 minutes, um, that's going to correspond to you know, 5 minutes less than 89 degrees west, so 88 degrees, 55 minutes. The same thing happens over here. Um, with the 10 minutes so we'll be able to use all these points as control points so now that we know that we're dealing with about a 1 to 50,000 scale um, let's go ahead and zoom to layer over here and put in 50,000 this is a I like doing this step even though it's not required um, uh, actually scaling the map before we do anything because it helps later with uh, being able to position it so and plus we can see other tools, the other options here in the Jurefson toolbar. So I typed in 50,000 into the scale bar here, and then I'm going to do georeferencing and fit to display. And what that's going to do is just place the image here on that display, on our display, scale it to the scale that we have in here, and just spot, uh, place it there geographically. So now if I zoom the layer, I can see that the map is right here, which I think the map is bigger than that, but we're going to find out. So I can use this little panning tool too, and then move it around. Um, this is by uh, this is by using the uh, using the Jurafson toolbar. I can use this little panning or rotate or scaling, all different types of tools that we can use. So let's go ahead and start adding some control points. So this is the control point button. Whenever we click the control point, you are supposed to click. The, the image you're trying to reference first and then the second thing that you put in is either you manually input in the control point that you know or you click the reference image that you're using so in this case we know some control points and let's just zoom in and we know that this corner we're going to have 89 degrees west and 16 degrees 15 minutes north um, so we're going to want to put a control point here at that location and then enter in this these coordinates. Um, whenever I georeference, I like zooming in very closely because it makes a big difference. So I zoom into like pixel level and then I go ahead and click and add my control point. So I can see here's the line and here's another line. So I'm saying that the, the control point should go somewhere around here. I'm going to click and now you can see that I've clicked and added a control point. If I right click now, it's going to bring me this contextual menu where I can say input DMS of longitude latitude. So I'm going to click on that and then I end up getting this enter coordinates. So what was it? 89 degrees, 0 minutes, and 0 seconds. And it was west. And then the other one was 16 degrees, 15 minutes, and 0 seconds. And that was north. So we say OK. And then, up. Oh, what happened? My image disappeared? No. The image actually moved because we have on our Jurafson toolbar auto adjust. So as we put points in, ArcMap is going to move the image and warp the image and change the image to actually start georeference and to fit it to where it geographically is and give you a preview of what the georeference final product is. So to go back to the map, I'm just going to right click Laguna Topo and say zoom to layer. And so now this map is actually in a different position than it used to be. If I zoom out to 1 to a million I can see that the map has moved before I had it up here somewhere 
not inserted in that point, it, it came down here. So now I want to put in my second control point, which I'm going to use that 55 degree, uh, 55 minutes that I saw here. So I'm going to zoom in to that part, and there you go, 55 minutes, little tick mark there. So again, I want to zoom in as close as possible. So here's 55 minutes. There's a tick mark. So we're going to zoom in here really close. So I'm going to click on this, zoom in, pixel level. I'm going to see kind of where the places, the two lines intersect with a tick mark. There's a tick, there's a line. So I'm going to click here. That's my first point on my image I'm georeferencing. The second point, I'm going to input it in manually. I'm going to input DMS of long lat. And here, I'm going to put in the point, so 88 degrees, and this was uh, 55 minutes, 0 seconds, and that's west, and then the latitude was 16 degrees, 15 minutes, 0 seconds north, and I say OK, and then it gets georeferenced. So let me zoom to layer, see if it's starting to look good, and you can already see it kind of like working out here with the coastline touching the, the shape file. So things are looking good. So we're going to do our third point, which was over here in the corner. There it is, the 10 minute mark. Zoom in. You see the tick mark. I'm going to zoom in closer on the tip mark. And then there is the pixel level. And I can see here where the intersection is happening. Again, click on it. Right click, insert in DMS long lat and this time longitude was 89 zero, 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 west and the latitude was 16 and this time since it was 15 before at uh, north of here south now it's 10 minutes and zero and that's the north so we hit ok and you can see now the the uh, image is getting less and less off the screen that's a good sign that means that we're getting closer and closer to more accurate points. So we we'll go ahead and zoom to layer again. Um, maybe I can see if there's another tick mark here. Zoom in. And there is the five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and do that one too. I'm going to zoom in very closely and get that pixel. And this is where I'm saying those two lines intersect. I click the image, right click, insert input DMS long lat and the longitude here was um, 89 degrees 0 minutes 0 seconds west and this one is 16 degrees 5 minutes 0 seconds north and I hit OK and there it goes moving and what's cool is that after you get so many points you start getting this visual representation of the error so this was the first point we chose from the image this is the point that we inputted in where it is and then this is the error from the rubber sheet being being showed graphically so this is like how accurate this uh, this rubber sheeting is happening which we're really zoomed in so this error is not that big of a deal um, so if I zoom to layer I can see my points are getting clearer and clearer that's good now we're gonna start using the grid so you can see here if I zoom in for example, over here at this this part of the grid, I can see here it says 0, 0, and 80. And if I move my mouse over here, I can see here in the corner, right here, where it says meters, just keep your eye on that, um, that point starts getting close to a 0, 0, and the other one gets close to an 80. And that's because these, these are just the last two digits in the UTM zone. So what I'm going to do is, again, zoom in closely. and I'm going to do my point and this time whenever I right click instead of doing input DMS because I don't have DMS long lot I have X and Y I'm going to input X and Y this is going to be in meters for the UTM zone and I remember that this was 0 0 so my last two digits I'm going to switch them to 0 0 and here the last two digits I'm going to switch it to 80 and hit OK and that inserts in that point. So you can see now I've just georeferenced in two ways, in long lat and now in also UTM zone control points. So 
So I can go back and uh, zoom to layer, verify what's going on, maybe choose another control point. I like this area. So I'm going to zoom into this one. And I can see here 0, 0, and 90. So again, zoom, zoom in close. Click on the on the intersection, right click and say input in X and Y. So X and Y. And here, again, it's going to be 0, 0, but this time you see we have to round up. So I'm going to put in uh, 300,000. So 300,000. And then here, this one was, hmm, I can't remember now. Um, and I can't zoom out. So, okay, well, that's okay. I'll just <laughs> zoom out a little bit so I can see what's, now that I have my control point. You can see here now the control point stays. So it's okay actually that I zoom out now. Oh, so that it was 90. So you can see here's 90. So I can go back to my input X and Y. I'll put in my 300,000. And then here, I want to switch this from instead of 109 into 90. And hit OK. And just verify that it looks, that it's getting close and accurate, which it is. It means I input it in right. So it seems like I'm getting some good points. Whenever you're georeferencing, you want to spread your points out. So you can see I have one here, one oh, on this side, one over here, one over here, one over here, one over here. I need probably one somewhere maybe in the middle. So if I look around, I can see maybe here at this 95 and 90, that might be a good spot. So this is 95 and this is the 90 line from earlier. So I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in and choose the control point and make a control point, right click and put X and Y. Here I'm going to switch that to 95 and here I'm going to switch that to 90 and hit OK. Verify that it looks OK. You can see my, my error is kind of off. If I click on here this error is way too high so something must have happened wrong maybe here I need to switch this to 890 no that even made it worse and you can see my error got even crazier so I'm going to delete this point <clears throat> the way you get rid of points that you made mistakes on is by, by going to the link table which is this one here here this residual you can see your error this is the point that I just clicked and messed everything up. So I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to hit the X. And the X will delete it. You can see now my, my error just reduced to, to 23, which is pretty good. So if I zoom to layer now, I can say, well, it's fine. <laughs> so if I click on here, investigate my error, it's at 23. It seems pretty good. Um, one thing I can do is maybe delete one of the points here. You want to have a minimum of five control points. I have six. So this 42 might be throwing it off, so I'm going to delete it. And I can see once I delete that, it, it actually becomes a lot more accurate. The error is reduced a lot. So then an uh, error, error of 3.42 is excellent. You want to get an error underneath at least 25 with five control points. So this is starting to look really good. I have five control points, they're all spread out and my error is pretty low. And I can zoom here and check out my coastline. And I can see that my coastline is coinciding pretty well with the shape file. That kind of gives me a visual. Uh, visual check. And so everything seems fine. So what's the thing I need to do now? I need to go to georeferencing and I need to update georeferencing. This is going to make the, the world file and other associated files that makes this from a JPEG to a GeoJPEG. So update your 